Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Slick D Gamer, Scott W. Perry Service, and uh, today we're going to start talking about WWF, WWE video games. Now, over the course of the last 33 years, we've seen many video games from the World Wrestling Federation, then World Wrestling Entertainment, that have been good, bad, ugly, great, stupendous, have changed gaming, have ruined gaming, and have basically been in between. It is basically everything wrestling is. And throughout the years, I have taken a look at all these games and I've collected them. I've played just about every single one. And I find even the bad ones to be, well, pretty good. So I wanted to start this by talking about each game as much best as I can. For each system, we're gonna go down the retro line. I like to call this Retro Chronicles. And we're gonna take a look at the very first World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment game. Now, a lot of people think when you talk about wrestling video games that the first one was actually WrestleMania for the Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1989. While, yes, that is the first console game, it actually wasn't the first World Wrestling Federation game overall. That game actually came to computers, and believe it or not, it's one of the better games that has ever come out from the company. Released in 1987 for personal computers, and this one is for, I believe, the Commodore 64, uh, but it's actually Micro League Wrestling. This was done by the Micro League series of games that they were releasing. They had a baseball version, a football version, of course, this the wrestling version. And there you see Hulk Hogan, WWF champion, right on the cover. And this game was, um, I mean, it's more of a strategy than a game, but it really was a good game. Um, what it was, it was a turn-based system. And if you look on the back, those are actually the graphics of the game. And it's actually pretty, pretty good. They took still images, best that they can do at the time. And you did a move based on what your opponent would do. And you would actually have a match. You can name the arena. You can name, uh, you can set the stipulations. And there was commentary from a series of teams. I believe it was, uh... Vince McMahon, Jesse Body Ventura, Bobby Heenan, Girl in Monsoon, Lord Alfred Hayes, and Bruno San Martino. Bruno's texts are just hilarious. Just when you look at it, he looks... It's funny, Bruno is as disinterested in the game as he was in real life at the time. The late, great Bruno San Martino. I love you, Bruno. Um, but this was great. You had a choice. You played as Hulk Hogan. And in the original game, you had a choice. Uh, it was a two-sided disc. So in disc one, you took on Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And the second disc, you took on the Macho Man Randy Savage. Now, being that Hogan was automatically the champion, you defended the title. And you would have an interview. It would begin. You would set up the game. You would pick your opponent. And there would be an event center. You would have first the challenger speak in some cases. Um... Randy Savage would have Elizabeth on his side, but Savage would talk, and it would be all text. And Orndorff would have his manager, Bobby DeBrain Heenan, with him. The stills were taken from actual matches, and then you would have the match, and then there would be a result. There would be sound. It's primitive, but it's actually not bad at the time. Um, the game opens up with the Superstars of Wrestling theme, done very, very well. And then once you get to the match, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's not a game that I would use for lasting effect, but it's definitely something that playing for an hour, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Now, the game is revolutionary for a few reasons, okay? Number one being the first ever wrestling game, of course. But in today's land of uh, DLC and downloadable content, in the day, this was the first game to actually have additional content. So they were in the form of expansion packs. Now, the first one came out here. And what I liked about this is this was made just like the Superstars uh, poster that came out at the time as a kid. And you had two extra matches on it. You had Randy Savage taking on Honky Tonk Man. And this match would be for the Intercontinental title. And then you would have Harley Race taking on Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And what I like about it is looking in, you had different controls on it. And as you look in the, um, the matchups, 
um, there would be basic moves. You would just scroll down and hit the move. But there was something interesting for each guy. If you hit a certain key, your manager can interfere. If you get caught a couple of times, you would actually get disqualified. Um, I believe uh, I did this once for Holly Race, and I believe I hit the R key for Race, and then for Honky Tonk Man, I hit the H key for Honky Tonk um, for disqualification. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, it's very realistic for its time and really ahead of itself. And just the fact that we had an expansion pack for the first one was, was good enough, but we didn't just get one expansion. We got a second one. And this one I like because this one um, has two really good matches in it that you can replicate. Uh, the first one is actually uh, Hulk Hogan taking on one of my all-time favorites, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. And the second one is Ravishing Okru taking on Jake the Snake Roberts. Now, in these games, it's the same setup. You put it in, you have your interviews with your wrestlers before the match, you set up the match, you put the arena that you want. I actually put mine in Slick D Arena. A couple of times I actually put in Madison Square Garden. It's actually, the the photos you can tell were taken from Madison Square Garden at the time uh, from their matches. And um, while they don't look the best, you can definitely tell. And I really like how they did their best to animate certain things. It's only a couple of frames here and there, but you definitely have a good feeling that you're actually involved in something. And that's why I like a lot about these games now one thing about it is if you take a look on the expansion i wonder if there was a third one coming out because you can see they have a couple of uh wrestlers that you don't see in here um basically bam bam bigelow coco beware one man gang and andre the giant so i'm wondering if there was a third pack that was supposed to be released my guess it was going to be andre versus bam bam and gang against where that's what i think um, it would have been nice to see, but um, it's interesting that, that those four were put on here and we didn't see it. So that's something that, that's a mystery that, well, I really don't care to solve, so whatever. Um, but again, these, this game was a very uh, good entry into the series. Um, if you had a Commodore 64, like I didn't, but I was so jealous of friends who did, um, that I'm glad to have had the opportunity to play them today. Um, if you can get them on an emulator, a uh, Commodore 64 emulator, or even on the mini, I believe you can play these on the mini that is coming out because it does have an actual Commodore 64 disc. So I'm, de I'm definitely going to try it, uh, for sure and see if it works. But I had a, I really had a fun time doing it. I would greatly recommend for anybody who, who has played it. I call this the forgotten wrestling game for sure, because it wasn't on consoles, but for a start, WWF, WWE was off to a very good start with this game, and I definitely recommend it. Um, on the next one, we're going to start uh, covering the NES games. We have four in total, uh, beginning with uh, WrestleMania, going up to King of the Ring, and that's a four-year period. So stay tuned next time for Retro Chronicles, WWF, WWE video games. This is Slick D Gamer, Scott Perry, signing off.